This is Space Tombo, a brand new, high score chasing Space Dragonfly Sega Master System game that supports the FM sound unit and, get this, Tate mode. The main goal is to get a high score by dashing into as many enemy orbs as you can. If the orbs make it to the back of the screen, then they'll self-destruct, sending out a bullet the player needs to be wary of. And I made this game using entirely the Z80 assembly programming language. But <laughs> why? Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make my own video game. Hell, I think most of you watching have probably had the same dream, but Space Tombo wasn't the first time I gave it a go. I had started and left many a project before this unfinished, so my initial goal was simple. Make something within the scope of my capabilities, perhaps borrow some gameplay ideas from a classic formula, but with enough of a twist to differentiate it from the source material, and finish the damn thing. When looking for inspiration, I thought back on one of my favorite games from high school, Brian Coventry's Orbit for the TI-84 Plus graphing calculator. In short, it borrows the gameplay ideas from the classic game Snake, but with the twist being, each time you capture a square, a new circle begins to orbit you. So simple, but so brilliant. My goal was to emulate the addictive, fast-paced, high-score chasing feeling that Orbit does so well. I decided to make a simple spaceship shooting game, since it's a genre I love, but I wanted to throw some kind of twist to make the gameplay stand out a bit more. I began this project in the summer of 2023, and here in Osaka, if you walk around any river during July or August, you can find thousands of dragonflies darting around everywhere. They are some of the coolest animals on the planet and have more control over their flight than pretty much anything else, making them incredibly skilled hunters. This skill set would make a dragonfly the perfect protagonist for my game, and their natural way of hunting made for the perfect attack that wasn't quite like anything else in any shooter that I've played at least. The dash. So now that I had a basic gameplay loop in mind, all I needed to do was start coding it. So, why did I choose the Master System over a PC, or the Genesis, or any other console? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The first one goes back to Brian Coventry's Orbit. Orbit is written in assembly for the TI-84, which has a variant of the Z80 CPU, the same one found in the Master System. And believe it or not, Tutorials on TI-84 assembly programming are actually quite common online, so it gave me a great starting point, plus it allowed me to fulfill a high school dream of mine, to create assembly programs for the TI-84 first, before then taking what I learned and applying it to the master system. The second reason is nostalgia. Now, I didn't own a master system growing up, but I did own a Sega Genesis. Unfortunately though, I don't think I'm quite a good enough artist to make anything that would look great on a 16-bit console, but with the 8-bit limitations of the Master System, I could still feel good about my artwork while being able to play my own game on my childhood game console. And once I looked into it, the Sega Master System is actually an incredibly underrated, highly capable machine with many features built right into it that the NES needed special chips built into the cartridge in order to support. There were also no games released to support Tate mode for the Sega Master System, and ever since I played Zero Ranger on a PVM flipped onto its side, I've wanted the world to be filled with more games that support Tate mode. There are, of course, the obvious limitations of making a truly 8-bit game, the graphics and music being the ones that stand out to most people. But there are also a lot of limitations that the average person might not notice that are often entirely console-specific. The Master System has a couple of quirks that I never noticed until I started coding for it. The first one is the giant letterboxing that happens for pretty much all SMS games. This blank space gives the CPU extra time to perform necessary graphics-related processes, 
and without it, we would have much less time to pull off drawing all of our graphics before entering the danger zone, where we can cause graphical corruptions. Interestingly though, we can actually control the color of the letterboxing, so in the splash screen, I just set it to be the same as the background color, and on the title screen I did the same thing. For the gameplay though, I thought just a plain black border would be better so that the player wouldn't be confused about where they can or cannot go. The second quirk is the leftmost column of the screen needing to be blanked out if horizontal screen scrolling is present. The screen is on a loop, so this column is constantly getting overwritten to allow the screen to continuously scroll, causing it to look messy and glitched out. The simple solution? is to just turn this column off so you can't see it, making the gameplay be shifted slightly to the right. When I record Master System gameplay footage, I usually just crop the letterboxing and left-hand column out and recenter the video. If you've never noticed these quirks before while playing Master System, then, uh, well, I'm sorry for pointing them out. Have fun staring at them for all of eternity now. Now, my first priority for this project was to implement a simple parallax effect in order to give my <coughs> simple background a little bit of depth. However, with only a single background layer to work with, we have to resort to some special programming slash background design techniques. While we don't have two different layers we can scroll separately, we do have horizontal blanking interrupts. The SMS draws graphics from left to right, top to bottom. However, each time the electron gun on a CRT reaches the right side of the screen after drawing graphics, it must reset back to the left hand side before drawing anything else. During this time, we have a brief window of opportunity to execute code related to graphics without causing any artifacts or glitches on the screen. The SMS allows us to program interrupts to pause the execution of game logic in order to quickly execute code during this gun reset time, known as the horizontal blanking interval, or H-blank. In order to make use of this feature, I first made sure to design my background so that the longer, theoretically closer stars in the background were always grouped together in 16 pixel tall strips, and the smaller, further away stars were on different 16 pixel tall strips. Then, during H-blank, all I did was swap between two different scrolling speeds depending on if the next strip was made of big stars or small stars. I made it so the big stars would move faster and the smaller stars would move slower, giving this simple space background some depth. I hope you can see from this example that there's so much thought and care that has to go into making a game. I didn't even get into what causes flicker or slowdown, how to program hitboxes, or what it's like to write music for an 8-bit machine in this video, but those are topics I'd love to touch on in future videos. So next time you start up a game, take a second to think about the time and dedication game devs put into making any given project. It'll give you a much greater appreciation for the game you're about to play. Space Tombo is up on itch.io right now, and I'll have a link in the description. The game is totally free, so why not give it a shot and follow me on itch.io as well to keep up to date with future projects of mine. The option to donate is also available on itch.io for those who would like to support my work. Plus, if you throw the ROM into a flash cartridge, you can play it on a Master System, Mark III, Genesis, or Mega Drive. For my next project, I'm looking to get into the world of the Game Boy. Though, specifically, I am fascinated by the Super Game Boy and all of its features and limitations, and I'm starting off with a port of Space Tombo, though with some tweaks and changes to not only improve upon the original idea, but to make the game work better for the system it's being ported to. I'm Boffner, and thanks for watching. See ya!